Hi guys, it's me again, Mr. McNichol. Good to see you. I hope everybody is happy. Uh, heard the big news. Yay! We're going to be opening up the state of Texas again slowly, starting Thursday, or is it Friday? I don't know. My kids are just bouncing around the house, all happy with themselves and with the way things are going. In any case, uh, for me, what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be talking about that assignment from Chapter 6 and 7. I'm going to be talking about the other assignment after that, which was the one on the symbolism of Daisy and Myrtle. I'm going to go through this fairly quickly, um, just so you guys know where it'll be coming from. I'm not 100% sure where things are going to be in another week. You're only going to get, also be aware of this, you're only going to get one major assignment this week, and that's going to be probably posted Wednesday of this week. Okay, you're probably seeing this Tuesday morning, maybe late Monday night. <clears throat> In part, that's because I have my four classes from uh, the dual credit that basically need me to get all their grading done and punched out and into the computers at uh, Tarrant County College fairly quickly. So I'm going to be busy doing that a lot over the next couple of days. Anyways, on to the assignments. I'm going to go through this fairly quickly. Well, in assignment number 11, first question, it's on chapters 6 and 7. Now that Daisy and Gatsby are seeing each other, <coughs> Gatsby has thro stopped throwing his parties. Why? Well, pretty straightforward answer, okay? Gatsby has stopped throwing his parties because he doesn't need to. What was the purpose of his parties? The purpose of his parties were to get Daisy's attention. Okay, Now that he has it, why bother? When you've climbed to the top of the mountain, an old proverb says, you can throw the ladder away once you are there. Okay, So that's the idea. Uh, the next question is, why Gatsby has apparently fired all of his servants and they, he has hired instead a bunch of gangster types who are doing the cooking and all the butlering, and they're not really used to it. These are guys who, you know, shoot people and stuff like that. They're having to be servants. Why has Gatsby done this? Well, number one, main thing is servants gossip. Okay? Servants gossip. And uh, he doesn't want any gossip to go around about Daisy. Gangsters, at least the 1920s gangsters, uh, there was a very important law, especially among the gangsters in New York. It was known as omerta. It meant silence. Okay, I didn't see nothing. Nothing happened. And so gangsters in the 1920s especially were known for their ability to keep secrets, if only because they were afraid of getting killed for revealing them. So that's why he has hired gangsters through Meyer Lansky, remember, the gangster who fixed the World Series, and he's the guy that Gatsby is doing some of his illegal stuff with. Well, the third one, Nick, one at one point in this little section, decides to go to lunch at Daisy's house. Who else is there? Well, first, Gatsby's there. Kind of a surprise. Daisy is bringing Gatsby. She is now having an affair with Gatsby. Now, at this point, there's some people who cheer and say, Yay, Daisy, you're getting your husband back for cheating on you. Daisy is kind of jumping one step further. Whereas Tom didn't even want Myrtle calling his house, Daisy is bringing Gatsby into the house she is kind of one-upping Tom here, okay? So we often may try to look at her like she's some kind of a bubblehead, but Daisy is playing a really dangerous game of chess, and Gatsby doesn't realize it. He is one of the major pieces that she's moving. Right now, Gatsby is there. What's one of the examples? Well, we see, David, we see Daisy's child, Okay, remember the little girl? Her name is Pammy. Read the text. How does Daisy act towards Pammy? Well, Daisy acts almost like a kind of a cartoonish mother. Oh, come here, precious. She's acting almost like somebody who is trying to act like a mom. 
rather than acting like a mom. I don't know if that makes sense, but look at the text. Her, the author, Fitzgerald, he purposely talks about how she puckers up her lips and she says all these cooing things, but there are more things that we'd expect a mom to say on, if she's a character on stage or in a movie or something like that, not like a real mom. So she is acting like a mom. She's not a real good mom to Pammy. And how is this like Myrtle's dog in the story? Well, remember, Myrtle gets the dog, and she feeds the dog, and she gives it biscuits, and then she forgets about the dog. After a few minutes, okay, after a really embarrassing thing with Gatsby, Daisy forgets about Pammy. We never see Pammy again in the book, okay? And why does Pammy leave? Because Pammy's governess says, let's go, okay? So Pammy is confused. Now Daisy, this is question five, Daisy takes little Pammy and makes her look at Gatsby and says, how do you like mother's friends? And Daisy turns to her, so the little girl sees Gatsby. Do you think they're pretty? What's she doing? How do you like mummy's friend? Do you think he's pretty? Do you think he's handsome? Pammy, she just looks back at her mom. Where's dad? Oh, that's an ouch moment. Because Daisy is trying to replace Tom with Gatsby. And Pammy's reaction, even though her dad is a jerk, she still says, where's my dad? And Gatsby ain't it. Gatsby freaks out when he sees Pammy. Gatsby looks at Pammy. Hi, sweetie. My wife just walked in the room. Gatsby freaks out when he sees Pammy because, remember, he wants to erase the whole past. He wants to erase Tom from the picture. And not just from the present. He wants to act as if Tom has never existed. But this little girl, Pammy, she's evidence that Tom is there. And he always will be. If he stays with Daisy, you can bet that a little girl is going to be there too. Okay? And that's something that Gatsby would probably... Do you think that would be a problem if he and Daisy ended up running off into the sunset together? I think so. Most people agree that would be a huge, huge problem. Okay, well, the next thing that you guys had to do okay, was this. You had to look up what each flower symbolizes okay, and put it down in one to two paragraphs. Now, daisy symbolizes, the daisy symbolizes a whole bunch of things. Okay, And uh, I'll go over the two, two or three most common things. The myrtle, too, is less well known, but I'll go over a couple of the more common pieces that they have. Okay, But if you've got a genuine piece that you've looked up, I'll accept it. Okay. The daisy, number one, represents simplicity, usually. Okay, The daisy is colored white and yellow. Hey, how do those both match daisy? Remember, white symbolizes purity. And daisy, they mention her reputation is spotless. She doesn't drink. Okay, She doesn't, until now, mess around on her husband. Okay, She doesn't do bad things. Second... It is yellow, and it is white. Yellow symbolizes wealth, gold, and obviously Daisy is wealthy. At one point, Fitzgerald says Daisy speaks and she, with a voice full of money, whatever that is. So, uh, also, the thing about the Daisy to remember, you may or may not have done this at one point, girls used to take a Daisy and they'd pluck the petals off. He loves me, he loves me not. He loves me, he loves me not. Because on a daisy there's so many petals, you know you don't really know where it's going to end. So a daisy looks simple, but it's actually complex, just like the character of Daisy. She looks like a bubble-headed idiot, but she's smart. She knows how to undercut her husband, Tom. Oh, he's reading lots of books with big words in them. She knows how to keep her reputation intact. 
okay, when ev all the other idle rich are messing their lives up, okay, she knows really how to get her husband in the worst way possible. How? Not just have a boyfriend, but bring that boyfriend into the house and introduce him to their daughter. Ouch. Okay, she's no dummy. She appears shallow. And then she'll say things like, I hope my daughter becomes a beautiful fool, because that's all a woman can become nowadays, a beautiful fool. So she has a lot of insights, a lot of surprising levels of depth. That's why she's named Daisy. That's who the character is. The character of the myrtle, a lot of people don't know myrtle is actually a flower. A myrtle is red colored. Now if you go quick and Google the Great Gatsby and look at the character of myrtle, she is dressed. Each character in those, pit, in those posters are dressed in various colors. Myrtle is dressed in red. Why? Because a myrtle is a symbol, symbolizes a warlike temperament. Okay? And if you look at Myrtle, she's at war in a lot of ways. She is fighting to get out of her class. <clears throat> she is fighting to take over Daisy's place in Tom's life. <laughs> Good luck with that. Uh, she literally gets into a fight with Tom when he breaks her nose. And she takes him on face to face. I'm going to say Daisy's name if I want. Daisy, 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 Daisy. She doesn't fight smart and sneaky like Daisy, but she fights. Okay? That's where those two ladies are different. Daisy seems shallow, but is surprisingly complex with a pure reputation and a lot of money. Okay? Myrtle, she is way more outspoken. She is way more warlike. Okay, She is the red myrtle flower, which symbolizes conflict. Well, I hope that helped, folks. I hope things are going well for you guys and ladies. I hope everybody stays safe and doesn't go crazy on Friday. Okay, Remember, we're taking this slow. Okay, We don't want to be like some places have been that... Uh, ended up having a massive relapse in society. So be aware of that. Okay? Thanks a lot, everybody. And uh, hope to see you guys on uh, Friday when we have our next uh, Google Hangout. Take care. Bye-bye.